Riker Matthews is with us of the New Orleans Saints. Riker, nice to have you back, man. Nice to be back. Uh, how long did it take you to grow the epic beard you have rocking right now? Uh, I mean, I probably started it. Let's see, when did I start it? Right after the bowl game. So yeah, I just stopped shaving and went for it there. I was in Houston with it, you know, slowly getting longer and longer. Then tried to trim it myself. You can probably <laughs> tell it's a little uneven, you know, both sides. But uh, yeah, so what is that? Five months, six five months. months. Okay, so do you need to find like a, a barber in New Orleans? That I can, need to because can you can tell it's it's not straight. Control at all. that thing. Yeah, control it a little bit. <laughs> Can't do it myself. Now, being in New Orleans, a lot of things come to mind. I've been to New Orleans twice. It's a fantastic city. And one of the things that it's known for, obviously, is food. Mm. So what's the best thing you've eaten in New Orleans? Uh, man, there was a lot of a lot of good places. I'm trying to think. Uh, there was a place on uh, or just right next to Frenchman Street and Bourbon Street that I just got the surf and turf, you know, steak and, steak and shrimp. And the shrimp that I had there was – incredible <laughs> it, was, it was so good so good and they had the live band that was playing and me and my girlfriend were there and we were sitting outside and just enjoying the night's air it was awesome it's it's an awesome city for sure. you ever have to step back and be like wow i'm i'm in new orleans <laughs> i'm for the time being playing professional football like what what has that been like for you uh it's definitely been an eye-opener for sure i mean it's what i've been dreaming for ever since i was a little kid and uh i mean when, when i'm there it's you don't really realize you know what what you're doing when all you're hanging out with are is the you know the new orleans saints and so uh i mean it's it's definitely an eye-opener and then you go to like a grocery store or a gas station and you know everyone knows who all the players are and i mean the the fan base in new orleans is incredible and they all know everyone and I mean, they look at us as family, and so it's uh, it's been eye-opening, and I've loved it for sure. The answer to this question may be obvious, but what's been the biggest change in your life since the end of the football season and then the last time we saw you, which was at BYU Pro Day? Um, yeah, like you said, it's obvious. I'm basically living in New Orleans now, and uh, I mean, I grew up at American Fork, played at American Fork High School, went to BYU 20 minutes away. Are you suggesting that New Orleans is different than American <laughs> Fork and, and Provo? No, not at all. It's exactly the same. Exactly the I've same. Always, I've always thought of New Orleans <laughs> as the American Fork of the East. <laughs> A lot of people do. I've heard that. Definitely. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Take us back to the end of the NFL draft when teams are essentially – trying to convince you to sign with them and, mm -hmm. and come and work out for their teams. Why did you decide to go with New Orleans? Um, I mean, luckily enough, I have an awesome agent that uh, was on the ball all through the draft, you know, tracking who was drafting who. And, uh, and I mean, I was out on the golf course during the draft, you know, with my, with my siblings. And honestly, I got a phone call from him that, you know, probably 10 minutes before the draft ended and said, all right, it's either so-and-so or the Saints. And I was like, all right, sounds good. He's like, yeah, I've just been watching them. You know, the Saints haven't drafted any offensive linemen, and it's not looking like they're going to. And so I think they're going to be your best bet. Or they, he said the Chargers or the other team, who is also interested a lot. And he's like, there's some other teams that are straggling in and out, but those are the ones that have called me multiple times you know, making sure that I'm ready and, you know, that they want to pick me. And then I just got a text from him, like, the second the draft was over, and I was like, congratulations, you're a saint. I was like, awesome. <laughs> Love it. No, so I've been I've been blessed. And That's the way to do the draft, I man. know, right? It I'm going to go nice. play golf. Yeah. You let me know when a team wants me. <laughs> yeah, just exactly. It was, it was nice. It was really nice, and he took care of it really well, and I'm on a great team now. Well, to this point, you've gone through – Mini camps, you've gone through some OTAs. What have the coaching coaching staff told you uh, about where you fit in and what they're wanting to see from you? Uh, I mean, they're really happy with how I played over the summer. Uh, I did pretty well. Um, you know, for the most part, I was second string left tackle all summer through rookie cam well, rookie camp. I was first just because the vets weren't there, you know. And then OTAs and uh, uh, vet mini camp. Uh, I was second string left tackle the entire time. And so, 
Um, you know, I, I, I think I kind of stand right there. I don't know where they want me as far as once the season comes around, if they want to move me into guard or, you know, over to right tackle and just kind of be a backup there. But, uh, I mean, from what they've told me, they've been really impressed with how I've been working and what I've been doing. And if I just keep working as hard as I am, then I got a great shot of making it. What have you improved upon the most since your collegiate days now to where we are now with the New Orleans Saints? Uh, I think focusing on the details has been a big thing for me. Uh, I mean, in the in the NFL, everything is so specific, and if you don't do those specific things, then you're going to lose on a you know a day to day basis or a play to play basis. And so, if you don't focus on those minute details of you know just uh, extra inch here or l one less inch there on a step or a kick step and uh, you're just you're not going to be as effective as you want to be and you know that's the biggest thing that I've learned from the vets is all those little little blades of grass that all, everyone always talks about they really do matter in the NFL because everyone is good there's no plays off uh, every single play is hard before we went on air I asked you if you had an opportunity to get to know Drew Brees and you mean like oh yeah well, what's the <laughs> what's the interaction with Drew Brees been like uh, I mean, he's an awesome guy. And the first, first or second day, the rookies were there. It was me and a couple other rookie offensive linemen just sitting at the table eating lunch. And he comes in, and you know, all the other vets are there. And he comes in and grabs his lunch tray and comes and sits next to all the rookie O linemen wow. and just starts talking to us. And you know, not even really about football, just like getting to know us. I talked to him about golf for about 20 minutes and. Uh, I mean, he's just an awesome dude, and I went to a charity event where, um, you know, he rented out the House of Blues and had Tim McGraw come sing. And because Drew Brees can do that. <laughs> yeah, and uh, I mean, he's walking by us, you know, go, you know, obviously he was busy during the whole thing. He's walking by me and a couple other dudes and, you know, stopping and saying hi and making sure, like, we're all right and we got everything we needed and I mean, he's just an awesome guy. Overall, just a great, great guy. You've protected uh, some pretty good quarterbacks at BYU between Taysom Hill and Tanner Mangum and now hopefully Drew Brees at the NFL level. Before you go, one question about the BYU football team moving forward. What do you anticipate from this new coaching staff and the fact that they bring back both Taysom and Tanner mm -hmm. and Ty Detmer as the offensive coordinator? I only – I think the sky's the limit. I mean, I – I only expect greatness from them. I mean, especially those two quarterbacks, whoever they decide to use, I mean, they're not going to go wrong. That's that's for sure. And that's a comforting decision. Yeah, right? I, I definitely think they're both amazing quarterbacks, and they both have their strengths, and they both have their weaknesses. And I'm, I know both of both the guys uh, very closely, and I know they're both working on those weaknesses. And um, it's, it's going to be fun to watch. You know, Ty Detmer is an awesome guy as well. And I think the new coaching staff is going to, you know, do whatever they can to make sure that this team is successful, which, you know, we all want to hear. But I think they're going to I think they're going to shock some people for sure. OK, one reminder for you, Riker. BYU football season is less than two months away. <laughs> Countdown to the Wildcats. 59 days, 59 days to be exact. Wow. Wow. Uh, I can see that. <laughs> <laughs> you should have joined in with us on the countdown. I know. Well, you should have told me about it. Yeah, we do would. it every <laughs> stinking day. <laughs> uh, thanks, Riker. It's it's great to catch up with you, man. Uh, we wish you the best of luck moving forward with New Orleans, and can't wait to see what develops, man. Thank you. I appreciate it.